Kennedy owned all the land around here. He was a banker and he also had worked in hardware previous to that. And when he wanted to make some money, he decided that he would subdivision this area. And in order to entice people to come in and, and put houses in, he wanted a school. He had been to Europe and he had been to Italy in particular, and he was really inspired by Italian architecture and art. And so his idea for a school would have uh, Italian kind of uh, architecture and art incorporated into it. And so when um, he decided to promote this project, that was one of the things that he promoted. And so we have this beautiful example of an Italian Renaissance style building in the neighborhood. I've been here since 1977 and I used to watch the kids across the street play and, and uh, always liked the building. I always thought that this was a great neighborhood. When the school started to get more and more run down, I got more and more concerned. I wrote the National Register nomination for the building without the permission of the school district, which had never been done before. No one ever writes National Register nominations for free. But I figured it would trigger at least two public meetings that we could at least discuss the condition of the building and how it was you know, going to be sold or, or developed or whatever. We also found out that they had budgeted $300,000 in their budget to tear the building down, and they hadn't told the neighborhood. Our bureau was involved with the Housing Authority of Portland, the School District of Portland, and Multnomah County in doing a three-party or four-party agreement, and Kennedy School was a piece of that agreement. Different, different agencies re receive different things within this um, multi-party agreement. And so since our bureau was involved with this project, we were the ones that received the school. <laughs> and I was the program manager that was signed to work on the project. Some of the committee members had been involved in saving this building for several years. The Bureau of Housing and Community Development had funded a small community initiative project with the Concordia neighborhood several years ago and the purpose of that was to look at, at feasibility of saving the building and, and could something be done. And up for a building like this, so it's a, it's a good idea to renovate these old buildings. People from the neighborhood who had originally worked on that first project were involved in this in this second committee that actually determined the fate of the building. So there, there were people like Melissa Darby and Denny Stecklin who had been trying to do something with this facility, well, ever since the school district closed it, actually. So I worked directly with that committee and um, managed the contract that, that we had with Portland Development Commission and handled the funds that we received in order to work out the feasibility of the building and to determine what we were going to do with it. As Barbara's mentioned, you know, maintenance of the building was, was the first issue the city undertook. Um, and it was obvious in, in looking at the building and starting to maintain it, the leaking roofs, uh, uh, the, the vandalism that it was occurring, that something had to happen here very shortly, otherwise the building probably couldn't withstand a restoration. It couldn't, uh, no matter what the economics were, the physical condition of the building was deteriorating, uh, escalated rate, that it was critical that something happened. So the, the, the urgency um, that we were feeling not only from the community uh, was compounded by the fact that the building was literally ready to fall apart. Um, so we tried to stabilize it as best we could, maintain it as best we could, uh, patch the, the leaky roofs, fix some of the drains, et cetera, et cetera. I went to kindergarten here, first grade here, 67 and 68. I lived in this neighborhood uh, all my life. I, I, I lived here since uh, my mom and me and my brother and sister moved in this, in this neighborhood in about 65, I suppose it was. Now it's a very nice area of town. It's very quiet. And uh, I think it's, 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 a, it's a big asset for this community. They need something to be drawn into here. Maybe that way they'll get another store here. There's nowhere to shop around here for the people in this area. They have to travel. I mean, it was a... Uh, I enjoy, it was an enjoyable childhood here. It was a nice school to go to. 
Nearly 15 years after the last class graduated from Kennedy Elementary School in Northeast Portland, a move is underway to rescue the neglected, dilapidated building. Bill Cooper takes us back to school. A little bit of dry rot here and there, but not much. Peeling paint, cracked plaster, warped floors. The John D. Kennedy School has definitely seen better days. It was built in 1915 on farmland in what at that time was a very rural section of Portland. The community is rallying around the school in an effort to save it. Astrid Griffin, Kennedy class of 36, is saddened by what she sees. It should have been maintained in some way. Uh, buildings all over the world get to be much, much older than this and are maintained and are meaningful. Architectural historian Melissa Darby agrees the school is significant and should be preserved. Some of the detailing that I particularly like are the, the grapevine motifs that encircle the building and the cartouches above, above the columns here are just really, really finely rendered. It's just a beautiful building. Some possibilities for the building include restoring it as a school. I believe that any neighborhood, every neighborhood has a particular heart of a neighborhood. It's, it's a place where, and, and it could be anything. It could be a school, it could be a community center, it could be a park, it could be um, an intersection, a corner where there's particular, where there's shopping. I mean, there's something that, that is the, the place that the neighborhood ident with which the ident neighborhood identifies. And Kennedy School has been that. People who live here and who have lived here for a long time, and even newcomers, when they talk about Concordia neighborhood, Kennedy School is, is their, the heart of their neighborhood. So the neighborhood has been very upset for many years after the, school, the closure of the school district and then the deterioration of the building. And a couple years I was taking care of this building, it, I would receive calls from people saying there's graffiti on the building, somebody dumped tires, there's, um, it's getting a little, you know, some branches blew down off the tree. The police called me. I caught two kids that broke in. I mean, people care, really, really care about Kennedy School in this neighborhood. What do you feel about fixing up the school? I feel real good about fixing up the school because it's been uh, nailed and bolted up for a long, long time. I used to go through on Killingworth out to my niece and my nephew, and that's too bad that building sit like that for so long. I'm very happy to see somebody fixing it up and going to have some things in there. When the Portland Development Commission came out to work with the Concordia neighborhood, um, uh, made it quite clear in our first meetings that we didn't have the magic answer for this building and we didn't have a pot full of money. And that it would take some hard work between both of us and some luck and some uh, help from people we didn't yet know <laughs> To, to, to make something happen here. So in that spirit, we, we took a look at the options, uh, we took a look at the feasibility, we, we had a series of community meetings uh, coordinated by a consultant firm to talk with the neighborhood about what they would like to see happen here. The school has sat empty since, relatively empty, since 1979. After the initial feelings by, I think, by some people that basically it's an old building, and it's lived its useful life and it probably ought to knock it down. There were, there were a number of people who actually didn't feel strongly about saving it because I think they couldn't imagine what you could do with it. The building can be rehabilitated. There's no doubt about that. So the challenge is, as you brought up... As a result of those conversations with the neighborhood, we issued a developer solicitation um, in which we invited developers to propose a plan for the building, um, an economic proposal, and in that uh, offering we indicated you know, the list of things that the neighborhood would like to achieve out of this. As a result of that, we received 11 different proposals from private developers and some public agencies who propo were proposing converting it into housing. Um, the community and our steering committee reviewed those proposals. We selected, I think, three finalists. We interviewed those finalists and chose uh, the McMinimans as the eventual developer subject to further negotiations.
McMenamins took their proposal straight to the people. More than 100 turned out at Whitaker Middle School to listen to the plans and speak their mind. Most seem to support the general concept. First thing I'd like to do is applaud the idea of, of uh, this miracle that's coming to the community. This is a great idea. <laughs> the McManamans have a reputation for turning historic buildings into profitable businesses. For our purposes, you have two enclosed courtyards that are just very beautiful and are going to become gardens and outdoor seating and pool area. And the style of the building is nice, Mediterranean style, so it's kind of conducive, a lot of glass. There's just a tons of glass in this building, so it's very bright on the inside. Skylights and all the windows go up to uh, oh, about 12 feet, 12 feet high, and it's just wonderful light inside the place. Uh, there's enough space where we can really do s some fun things. The old auditorium is a great room with uh, exposed trusses that are all detailed and arched windows and uh, a large space. Kind of interesting, I thought. For a, it was a pretty small school, realistically, but uh, the space will, will for a, for a film uh, and live music and performance room is really a great room for us. Uh, and a restaurant, of course. There's 35 overnight rooms. There's a lot of meeting space for any sort of wedding or reunion or business meeting or that sort, uh, so that sort of thing. And there's the old gym, which is kind of a half gym, but that'll be open for uh, neighborhood use, uh, for uh, basketball games, uh, for parties, for whatever, you know, reason. It's a great room. Skylights again, lots of light. There's going to be a community garden on the back side uh, for the neighborhood, which will be a nice uh, interaction with our own gardens and, and grounds. Uh, there's a, a neighborhood uh, community room that's designated for neighborhood use. Through this process, through this exercise, I think we've demonstrated that the city cares about the neighborhoods, that we have um, the ability and the resources to partner not only among different bureaus in the city, but with the neighborhoods to make something happen that fits the character, um, desires uh, of the neighbors themselves um, in a way that promotes uh, economic development in this case. Investment of this size, and we're talking about $3 million, is going to show other business people that, hey, Northeast is a place where you can invest money now. This, this is an okay area. In this whole process, what has worked particularly well for you? The city. The Portland Development Commission and the city. Their, their um, attitude was that this is a, a business deal. We're looking for developers. The private interests are the only way to go for this building. There was no public money for it. We all understood that. They had an outline process. We followed the outline and we got results. And the, it was the city's methodology that worked. McMinimum School is uh, the first beginning of, I think, improving the Northeast the stigma that's been on the Northeast, and I think will improve all the small businesses, and uh, it'll give us a better chance, a better opportunity to survive here in this uh, in this area. I, th I, so I think it's one of the best things that have happened in Northeast, this McMinimum's project, and I think all of the businesses appreciate it. I think it's gonna be great for us, and I think we'll, we'll do a, a lot to help them. And we'll just help each other. Become, they'll all become part of the community.
takes so much. Um, the reward is, is great, but the real reward is the building and everybody who helped out. Thanks a lot.